And in my experience, that's actually more difficult to do, to to step outside of that, that pain, that trauma, that fire, and not react. Sometimes the easiest thing to do is react. And for me, with my, you know, suffered pretty badly from anxiety, I uh, when I actually sat with it, I would have a panic attack. Yeah. So I would do anything to not have to sit with it. Yeah. Drugs. Yeah. Sex. Yeah. 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 You know, distracting my mind. Some productive things like playing music, but some yeah. very unproductive things. And the first time I did sit with it, and I had a panic attack on the other side of that real panic attack, and it was after a quite sort of extensive journey in shamanism that I finally had the strength to say I'm just gonna just gonna let this panic attack happen because I'm, I'm exhausted and I totally surrendered and yeah. after that this bliss just descended and it faded away yeah well panic attacks come with uh, negative stagnant emotions in the body somebody thing has had triggered some situation has triggered and it's uh, erupted like a volcano yeah so with the tantric journey healing process, what we do is we get in touch with the volcanic volcano inside the body, but we make little holes so that it erupts over a period of time, slowly, 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 mm -hmm. so you can manage the eruption. So this is what this healing is about, getting in touch with your volcano inside your body as a result of the past and making little holes and giving this volcano to erupt in very, very small doses where you can manage. Yeah. So it's manageable. Yeah. Yeah. And I like the, uh, the what you said about Shiva consciousness, the things going in one ear and out the other, yeah. not <laughs> affecting your heart, yeah. not affecting your lingam. Yeah. And that doesn't mean not listening. It no. means understanding. It means... Understanding the person who is with you, mm. accepting and supporting, but you don't absorb that negative energy or thoughts or feelings or positive energies. You don't absorb it. This goes from one ear to the other and it just passes by. Mm. So you become a good listener to the client. Yeah, but it's difficult, it's diff especially to practice that with those you love. Yeah. Uh, it, what it, is it just practice and, and mental strength and say, let it go? Why you can't go. do that? Let's say you have a client and they are telling their sad story and very, very sad. Now, that can trigger your sadness in your body. Mm. So therefore, you cannot listen to her because it's triggering you. Yeah. Then you become sad or angry. So what I'm saying is, before you become a practitioner, I mean, part of our training is you heal yourself as well at the same time while you're learning how to heal others. So part of the journey for you is to release your emotions, you know, through a period of time. And eventually you will find that a lot of these emotions will go away. Then nobody can trigger you. Clients can't trigger you. Then you will have the ability to be in the Shiva consciousness and listen to the client, but not absorb what client is saying. Yeah. So therefore, your energy is not affected at all. And you still become a good vessel for the client to download all their negative things, and it doesn't affect you at all. Yeah. And with lovers, is that amplified when it becomes harder to... With the lovers, it's the same. <laughs> Absolutely the same. Yeah. Because there's no difference between the healer and the lover. Exactly the same. 